As he said, um, we do start a brand new series today titled Over the Long Haul. What we want to do is we want to have a faith that lasts for the long haul, th through the ups and through the downs. Whatever we go through, we want to have a faith that can withstand it. Ever been on a road trip? Raise your hand, nudge someone next to you, give them a hoop and a holler. On a, on a road trip, obviously the goal is to get from here to there, to get to your destination and back over the long haul. Now, uh, most of my road trips have happened on mission trips. So a few years ago, we were on a mission trip to uh, Colorado. And I remember we took our biggest crew we've ever took, 130 students, 11 vans traversing down the road. And I remember we would, we would travel in fleets. We'd travel in three different groups of vans for safety, of course. So I remember going down the road and getting a call from the passenger, of course, I was in the passenger seat. They barely let me drive on these things. <laughs> and the uh, passenger seat of the other person, they called me and they said, hey, I think there's something wrong with my van. And I'm thinking, we've got a destination to get to and we got to keep time. Like we got to keep going down the road. You know, how bad is it? They're like, it's pretty bad. I'm like, let's keep going. They're like, no, seriously, we have to stop. So we pull over and it turns out this van was not going to go another mile. Something had happened to it and it had broken down and it would not take us any further on the journey. The van was not going to make it the long haul. Now, before I make my point, I just want you to know, parents and students, I've been on 18 mission trips. We have had, we've traveled 13,000 miles together. We've sent 1,100 students safely there and back. And let me tell you, out of about the 95 vans that we've had on the road, it was just this one time that it broke down. So if you're thinking, hey, I don't think I can let my student go on one of these things, don't worry, we'll bring them back safely 99% of the time. All right. But what's the point? <laughs> the van broke down. And we don't want to have a faith in the same way. I don't know about you, but I want to have a faith that can last the long haul. We have this mantra in the student ministry that says we want to lead students to a relationship with Jesus that lasts a lifetime, not just a moment in time. So what does it look like for us to have a faith over the long haul? What we want to do is we want to look at the Faith Hall of Famers. And what we want to see how we can grow faith like them that will last over the long haul. But how many of you know we sometimes hit some pitfalls and some challenges? In fact, tragedy, trials, and transitions shake our foundation. Haven't you known this to be true? That things happen and are happening right in and amongst us right now tragedy, trials, and transitions, and they often shake our foundation. Has your faith or has your foundation been rattled or shaken lately? If I were to be honest with you, it is for me. As I was listening to social media and uh, they continued to share news about George Floyd, I could not help but listen and watch for myself. And it felt like an hour's worth of footage in that five or eight minutes as I watched um, uh, someone have their knee on George's neck as he struggled to breathe time and time, time again. I have to admit to you, I was shaken. And the image and the voice is stuck in my head. I can't breathe. And obviously, it's completely inhumane. And as a result, now we have seen riots and looting. I just remember just the, the feeling of, of shock and awe as someone took a photo from Hudson. And you could see the flames coming from Minneapolis, from all the destruction that was taking place. Listen, you don't have to be a theologian to know that this is not how the world ought to be, right church? And it's in these moments 
these tragedies and trials that our foundation is often shaken. And so we look on the news and we look on social media and, and you'll see this question. What do you stand for? And so the, it, it causes us to ask the questions about our political persuasions. And, and you hear people pointing fingers at leaders. And even on my drive in today, I heard one of radio anal uh, analysts said, the governor better have answers. And we can say, hey, what do you stand for economically or politically or, or with the COVID virus? And everyone has an opinion. And we can look about what we uh, stand for. But I think there's a better question. Uh, a, a question that can actually move us forward if we take time to think about it in a richer and deeper way, and it's, what do you stand on? I think it's important to, to wrestle what you stand for. That's a very important thing. But perhaps even more crucial is to ask the question, what do you stand on? You see, that question is a question of, where is your foundation? I, as I have been watching on the news and hearing people talk about this, not only have we had anxiety like crazy in this season, but now I'm afraid some people are moving into despair and they're feeling hopeless and helpless. And by no means do I think that that is God's design. By no means do I believe that God um, has planned COVID or all the tragedy that's happening around us in the Twin Cities. But hear me, church, I do know this. It is causing every human in the Twin Cities, in the country and around the world to ask the question, what do you stand on? Because for years with prosperity in this neck of the country, we have been able to, on one hand, say, I have faith, but truly put our weight and our faith and our job and our finances and the enjoyment that we find the pleasures of this world. And this season, for faith people and non-faith people, for church people and non-church people, to ask, what do you stand on? And we're gonna look at the context of Hebrews chapter 11, and we gotta start in, in chapter 10, because the reason why we're looking at this, and we're learning from these Hall of Famers over the long haul of their faith because they also were in a point of shaken foundations. They were being persecuted and challenged in their faith like never before in the early church. And so this pastor, who is an unknown author, writes these words in, in Hebrews chapter 10. And I want you to see that they were in a similar scenario and honestly, let's be honest, even worse scenario than even us right now. And let's watch as they are tempted as well to hit the eject button on their faith. And here's what it says in, in Hebrews chapter 10. Remember those early days after you first saw the light? The pastor wants them to pause and say, hey, can we go back in time and remember the moment where, where, where God became real to us? Those were the hard times. Anybody experiencing those right now? Kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you, other days your friends. Pause right there. This is like as if it happened, this was written in the news today, church. When I read the message version, which this is from, it sounds like it's literally what we would say today. And look at what the next verse says. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies broke in and seized your goods, talk about looting, you let them go with a smile. Look at this. Here's the answer. Knowing they couldn't touch your real treasure. They were experiencing, if you even look at this, the scripture and the description, a similar moment where their faith was shaken. And there were some people abandoning the faith. And the pastor is saying, knowing they could not touch your real treasure. The pastor who wrote this down wanted them to remember in the midst of this earthly place that we do live, there is something going on that's beyond this place. When everything seems to be shaken, there is a place you can find your sure footing. 
This is good news. Whether you are just logging in for the first time or you've been around church a long time, or maybe you hit the eject button on faith, or, or you're coming back because of everything that's happening. I want you to know that when everything seems to be shaken, there's a place where you can find sure footing. There's a place where you can be sure that your feet can stand firm. And so the author of Hebrews takes us back to what faith is. And I've been wrestling this verse for quite a long time. I've followed Jesus a long time, and this verse has never really, uh, I've never really understood it. But as I've te- spent time with it, as I've spoken with Jeremy about it, as I've spent time in prayer, this, is, this kind of image has been in my mind that helps me understand this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, the English translators have translated this verse a few different ways. Um, And there's some debate as to what it means because it was, of course, not written in English, but in Greek. And the usage of the Greek text actually can have a few different dynamic meanings depending on how you translate it. So what I want to do is show you what makes sense to me. Now, faith is this word pistuo, that is faith, and it, it can be broken down to these two words, iste me and epi. So epi technically would go on the front of this, but it kind of means, it literally means to stand upon. Now faith is the thing that we stand upon. It's, it's a gift that God gives us that we might be able to have a firm footing. Now faith is the thing that we stand upon, and it's the substance. Substance is another kind of play on this word. It means to stand under like a shelter. So what is faith? Faith is something I stand on, and it's the substance, and that is uh, God's nature. Who he is is like a shelter that we come up under. So we stand on faith, and we come under who God is. The foundation is laid and we stand firmly on it and we come under his goodness, his grace, his faithfulness, that he'll never leave us or forsake us, that he'll continue to provide for us. It means we come under that and we hide under it like a shelter. And we do that in things hoped for. Now this hope is not like, oh I wish, or I hope the Vikings win a Super Bowl. It's a hope that's deeply in their hearts, church. It's this hope that's tied to this Old Testament feeling that God will do what he says he'll do, that God will bring Jesus to them, that will begin a new way of life and living. And so the Hebrews, they have seen Jesus come and they've seen Jesus go, but they're still holding on to the hope of what was and what God's gonna keep doing, and we'll get to that. And so you might come here today and you might say, well, I'm losing faith, or I am surrounded by uh, relatives, or maybe you know somebody who said they've just lost faith. And I'm gonna tell you, church, it's not about having faith or no faith. You see, that's a, it's a false dichotomy. Everyone has faith in something. Everyone is putting their trust. Everyone is putting their weight upon something or someone. It might be a relationship. It might be a career. It might be just spending time with certain people that you seem to make you happy. It might be all sorts of things where we have put our weight upon. For some of you moms and dads, maybe you've put your weight upon your family. And it's all about the family system. Everyone has put their faith in something. So it's not about if you have faith or not. But faith is where you place your footing. Everyone has it because everyone on the planet is placing their trust on someone and something. Even if you don't believe in God, that means by definition you are placing your trust on yourself. Placing your trust and how you understand the world. Everyone has faith in something. Faith is where you place 
your footing. And for Christians, Christians have faith and it's standing on the sure footing of what God, let's see this here, has done, is doing, and will complete. Faith, Christian faith, the kind of faith that Hebrews talked about, the kind of faith that you can have for the long haul is the one that stands on the sure footing under who God is of what God has done, that he has showed up in the person of Jesus to announce that there's a new way to live. And instead of fighting back as the Romans beat him and put him to a cross, he allowed it. He wasn't a pacifist. He was saying, here's how you fight hate. Here's how you fight injustice. You fight it with love. And no greater love is this than to lay down one's life for one's friend. That's how Jesus fought injustice. This is how we should fight injustice, to confront it head on and to love aggressively, to bring justice, to bring love in, in our circles of influence because of what Jesus has done and because of what he's doing. This weekend marks Pentecost. It's the beginning of the church when Jesus breathed on his disciples and gave them the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1, uh, as Jeremy talked about, the Holy Spirit came upon them that they might be empowered to be who God was calling them to be. So we have this faith that is not just what God has done, but what he's doing in and through us. Because of his sacrificial love, we can sacrificially live and love in that same way. But you might look around and say, well, the world is still broken and I am shaken and I'm going, where is God in all this? Because we're not done with the story yet. Go back. It's we have this sure footing of what he's done, is doing, and will complete. That God promises that he will come and finish what he started. That he will come and wipe every tear from their eyes and right every wrong and bring just what was unjust. So as you look out and you see injustice, that's where we say it should not be, it ought not be, and we step into that. But until that day comes, this world will continue to be broken and decompose until Jesus comes back. Faith is trusting that God is for me and he's for you and he's for the world and it's a good plan for you and I. So the question as we move to a close is where's your footing? Where's your footing? Are you continuing to put your faith and trust on your own strength, your own abilities? Or are you putting on the sure footing of what God has done, is doing, and will complete? Jesus was teaching in John chapter 6, and it said that the crowds were all around him. And he gave this hard teaching about how they had, if in order to follow him, that they had to eat his uh, body, his flesh, and drink his blood, and they didn't understand what he was saying. And he grew, gave quite, quite a sermon because he grew negative in numbers. And the text says this, for this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. They didn't understand what he meant. They didn't understand what was going on in the world, and they no longer followed him. And watch this next interchange. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Now, before we close today, I believe every person should answer this question. To whom shall we go? Peter knows something we should know. Peter is considering something you should consider. For faith is just simply where you put your footing. So if you are thinking about leaving faith because of your foundation is shaken, you must answer the question, where are you going to then put your footing next? Because every one of us has putting our foot, our footing, our weight on something. And the question is, what are you going to step away from? If you're going to step away from Jesus, what are you going to put your weight on? 
That's an important question. As the crowds left, Peter didn't understand everything Jesus was saying, but he certainly didn't have a better option. He didn't have a more secure footing than the person of Jesus. And he said this to Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is where Peter has put his footing, even when he didn't have all the answers. So there's a famous story about a famous tightrope walker. And he was known to go on the highest heights and step across this wire. And, there, and so the true story goes that he drew a crowd. And he's walking on some place like Niagara Falls, back and forth. And first he's, you know, he's walking this way. And they're like, do you believe I can do it? And they're like, yeah, we believe you can do it. And he goes this way and he's walking on the line. And then he goes, hey, do you believe I can walk backwards? And they go, yeah, we believe you can do it. And then he begins to jump on the wire. And he says, do you believe I, I'll, I'll, I'll stay on here? And they go, yeah, we believe you can do it. Then he goes even crazier and he brings a wheelbarrow out there. And he begins to wheelbarrow on the line and they go yeah we know you can do it we believe you and he pauses and he asks well then will you get in the wheelbarrow and no one went you see friends god is inviting you not just to say with your mouth yeah we believe you but faith is where you put your footing putting your money where your mouth is Faith is getting in the wheelbarrow, trusting that your heavenly father, if he invites you out on the wire, that it's actually safer on the wire in his wheelbarrow than it is on the side of the mountain. As we close today, where is your footing? May you allow Jesus to do a powerful work in you as you put not even just your words, but your trust on him. Matthew chapter seven, verse 28 says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. It's more than just a mental ascent. It's more than just what we say with our words, but it's when we put it into practice and we step into the wheelbarrow and say, God, I trust you. Let's pray.